Hey, it's Cody again, and we're here for part two of three on our Lightboard series on Active Cluster and VMware. So this topic is stretch clusters. What is a stretch cluster? What is a cluster? Right? Well, let's start off, what's a cluster? Well, in vSphere, a cluster is a collection of ESX servers. And these ESX servers run your virtual machines. Okay. Uh, and these are typically in a single failure domain. And that could be a data center, that could be a rack, um, that could be a city. And so generally, with these hosts, if, they, if one of these hosts fails, these other hosts can take over their workload, their virtual machines. Okay. But the problem is, is that if all of these hosts fails, who takes over that workload? And now you get into a disaster recovery situation. And so this is where a stretch cluster comes in. And so in a stretch cluster, I can add additional hosts. But these are actually in different failure domains. So let's say this one's in New York, and this one's in New Jersey. And so if I lose all my hosts in here from a power loss or some kind of catastrophic failure, it's unlikely that these hosts suffered the same fate. Right? And so these hosts are still running, and so they can take over the virtual machines. But in order for this to happen, they need to both see the data for those virtual machines. Right? And this is where, where stretch storage comes in. In a stretch storage example, we have two arrays. So we'll say flash array one and flash array two. And on here I have a volume that's stretched. So this volume is in a pod, and so this VMFS data store exists on both of these arrays. So there's two different types of stretch vSphere clusters. There's uniform and non-uniform. So what's a non-uniform cluster first? Well, in this scenario, my ESX servers have paths only to the array that's local to them. So one of my arrays is in New York, one of my arrays is in New Jersey. Right? And so these ESX servers have paths only to this volume via this flash array. The ESX servers in New Jersey only have paths to this stretched volume to this flash array. So if the New Jersey array fails, these hosts no longer have access to storage, so these hosts have to take over. The other concept is uniform. Uniforms that means that all hosts have access to both arrays. So in this scenario, hosts have access across the network. They, have, they are cross-connected, in other words. So what this means is an additional level of resiliency. If one of these sites were to lose their array, and they would lose paths to that volume on this array, they have surviving paths to the other array. So the VMs don't even have to be restarted on another host. It's a multi-pathing failover. If I were to lose these paths, the IOs can go down these paths to this array. Now this begs the question, especially if there's large distance between these two sites, I might get some additional latency. So how does this work? Well, let's, let's take a look at this in a little bit more detail. So let's say I have one host, and I have an array, and I have another array and this is my ESX server. And so what happens when, an, when a write occurs to a stretched volume? Well, this host writes it here, and then this array acknowledges it to this array, and this array acknowledges it back, sends back the acknowledgement, and the write is committed. But this does mean that the IO has to cross the WAN once. In a cross-connected scenario, what happens if my write goes across here? and then it has to go back to be acknowledged because it needs to be acknowledged on both arrays. That means my I.O. is crossing the WAN twice. And so that's a non-optimized write, right? Because we're increasing the latency when we don't really need it. As long as this array is here, we should be writing locally because then there's a, a short write and then one long one instead of two long writes. So what we do on the flash array is we have the concept called a preferred array. So on this array, the array local to these hosts, we'll say, this is preferred for this array, this host. And on this one, this one is non-preferred for these hosts. 
And so what you'll see inside of vSphere is that some paths are active, optimized, and some are not. vSphere will use the only the active optimized paths if they're available, and it will not use the non-optimized paths. The only time it will use the non-optimized paths if all of these paths go away. And so in that, in that scenario, when it loses all these paths, it will then write across the WAN. So the latency will be higher, but you have better resiliency. And then when this array comes back online, maybe it was you lost power or something like that, the IOs will switch back going to the optimized paths to this particular array. So that explains what a stretch cluster is and how it works with Active Cluster. Now, how does VMware respond to failure scenarios? What's the mechanism that does this in a stretch cluster? And this is, of course, vSphere high availability. In part three, we'll talk a little bit about vSphere high, ability, high availability and how it works with Active Cluster.